I'm quite sure that a lot of people were not even able to calculate the total external resistance of the circuit. Let me show you why. We're going to skip 8.1, obviously. It is Ohm's law. B is equal to I multiplied by R. Let's take a look at 8.2.1 instead. So we're looking for the total external resistance of the circuit. Okay. We know fully well that R external is equal to RP plus RS. Let's take a look at RS first because it is easier to calculate the resistance in series. You just add all those resistors up. If you, can, if you take a look at our setup, you should realize fairly quick that we have no resistance in series. RS is equal to 0 ohms in the grand scheme of things. You're going to see why I'm saying in the grand scheme of things. Okay. Um, if you are not very fluent with electric circuits, then we need to do this first. This is the negative terminal. This is the positive terminal. The current flows from positive to negative. So it is going to flow in the following fashion. We're going to have something like this. But at this point, the current splits, right? A proportion of the current goes down this path while the other proportion of the current goes down this path. Okay? So the total resistance on this path is in, is in parallel with the total resistance on this path. Okay, but it is a bit deeper than that because on the upper path, we have R1 and R2, which are also in parallel. So we need to find the effective resistance of R1 and R2 first. Okay, so RP will be equals to R1 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, so we have 10 multiplied by 10, 100. Divided by 10 plus 10, 20. 100 divided by 20 is 5 ohms. Okay. So the effective resistance of these two resistors is actually 5 ohms. Right. So that tells us that the total resistance on the upper path is 5 ohms plus 10 ohms, which is 15 ohms. Okay. So if we want to calculate RP for this path and this path together, we're going to have rp for the entire circuit we're going to have rp being equals to r1 multiplied by r2 r1 is the total resistance on the upper path which is 5 plus 10 multiplied by the total resistance on the lower path which is 15 ohms okay everything divided by r1 plus r2 so that is 5 plus 10 plus 15 on the numerator we have 15 multiplied by 15. On the denominator, we have 15 plus 15. RP will be equal to 7.5 ohm. Okay, so this is the total external resistance of our circuit. It is 7.5 ohms. Let's move to 8.2.2. Yeah, this situation where you have parallel on a path that is parallel. It is not so common, but you need to know how to take care of that. You first have to calculate uh, the effective resistance of R1 and R2. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at 8.2.2. In 8.2.2, we want the reading on the armature. As you can clearly see, the armature is experiencing current that is not divided. So basically, we are looking for I total, okay? So I total is what we are interested in. We have R external, which is equal to 7.5 ohms. We have R internal, which is 0 0.5. We have EMF, which is equal to 12. It will be obvious the equation we need to use. Okay, EMF is equal to I total multiplied by R external plus R internal. EMF is 12. I total is what we're interested in. R external 7.5. R internal 0 0.5. Okay. So 12 is equal to IT multiplied by 8. So IT will be equal to 12 divided by 8. That should be 1 point something. 1.5 ampere. So there we go. We have our current. 
8.2.3, what's the mark allocation for max? Okay, 8.2.3, we're interested in the power dissipated by R3, okay? So R3, the potential difference across R3 is VP, because on that path, we only have R3. If we calculate VP, then we can say that the power dissipated by resistor R3, R3 will be equals to V squared divided by R, okay? So let's go ahead and find VP. VP is IT multiplied by RT. IT, that is 1.5. RT, uh, the total resistance in parallel, uh, that is 7.5. We know fully well that um, RT is... Not RT, but RP, right? That's supposed to be RP. VP is equal to IT multiplied by RP, okay? So 1.5 multiplied by 7.5, that is 11.25 volts. So we have VP. We can go ahead and calculate the power. The power is going to be 11.25 squared divided by the resistance, which is 15, okay? Let me go ahead and put that in my calculator. So 11.25 squared divided by 15 is 8.44 watts, right? So there we go. We have our power. The power is 8.44 watts. 8.3, 8.3.1, switch S is now opened. Okay, so let's go ahead and open switch S. If we open switch S, uh, this resistor R3 is no longer taking part in our circuit. So this that other path is non-existent, basically, okay? All the current is flowing through uh, this path, right? It's not going to divide at this point anymore. Yeah, we're going to have something like that. Uh, what does our equation say? If uh, the resistance of the light bulb remains constant, how will the brightness of the light bulb be affected? Choose from increase decrease or remain the same. Explain the answer to question 8.3.1. Is it increasing, decreasing, or remaining the same? Let me know in the comment section. I'm going to check the comments after an hour, and then I'm going to reply with the correct answer. So make sure that you come back here after an hour and check 8.3.2. This is four marks up for grabs. Did you get this four marks or did you lose it? Come back after an hour and find out. In the meanwhile, you can let me know what your answer is and why you think so.